Up next, we have DK, and he'll be in conversation with Alexandra um, and for a fireside chat. Um, we're gonna have a quick moment to hear to enjoy the exhibition, and then DK will be up. So yeah, um, hold tight. So let's give it up for DK and Alexandra Art. Hello, hello. Oh, wow, magic mic. Hi, everyone. Um, for those of you that do not know, maybe we'll start with a quick intro. So. Hi, I'm Alexandra Art. I'm the head of arts at Charlie Tech, and I'm leading art projects across the Tesla's blockchain. And hi, I'm DK from South Korea. I'm a 2D animator, and yeah, I make two things move. Um, should we think of? So um, last week, DK asked on his Twitter if anyone wants to ask him some questions today. And thanks to Greta, we have some of these questions recorded. So the idea for the panel is we're going to do a quick Q&A and give a little shout out to all the people that responded. Are you ready? Let's do it. <laughs> all right, so the first one is from Eclectic Method. And the question is, do you listen to music while you work? Uh, yes, I do. I do listen to music. Uh, I don't really have a preference. But I find myself listening a lot to lo-fi, like classics, and. Uh, Depending on the move, I do listen to like rap, hip hop, and some K pop maybe. And yeah. All right. Um, the next one is from Beth. Can you share a story of an artwork inspired by real life event? Absolutely. So, one good example would be this piece over there. It's called Am I Dreaming? And that actually, like, literally happened to me. Like, I was working on my uh, project and I fell asleep, and then I started dreaming and I find myself like finding all these random cute characters running around making a mess very chaotic and I wanted to visualize that when I woke up so it's exactly like what I dreamed and yeah that was so cute I love the little Pepe's running on the floor as well yeah, those are cute right 
All right, let's skip to Eli. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. So the next one is, what advice do you have for emerging artists in Web3? Um, I guess the biggest uh, advice would be have fun in what you do, because um, that's what I try to do most of the time. And you know, when you have fun, you do it nonstop, right? And when you do it nonstop, you just become good at what you do naturally. And when you're good at something, uh, doors of opportunities just open up like naturally. So you know, and when does that happen? All you have to do is just walk in and you know, just try to have fun in what you do and be true to yourself. That's my advice. I love that. The next one is from Stargaze. Oh, okay. So this is a subtle shell. Would you consider launching on another blockchain? I'm not really against with other blockchains. At the moment, I'm only on Ethereum blockchain right now. But um, I do keep I do keep my eyes open for all the other um, stuff that's happening. Um, you know, Ordinals, Solana, Tezos, everything. So, but when I do decide to drop something on different blockchain. Um, I try to make sure that I know everything, I know exactly what I'm doing, so I'm trying to be very uh, cautious with everything I do. Yeah, I respect that, by the way. It's, it's really easy for an artist to sort of like fall into the rabbit hole and focus more on the chain than the art. Okay, so the next one is Maris. How do you capture so many emotions in your pieces? Um, you know, I believe uh, every artist are a storyteller and so for me, like I'm an artist, but I believe I have an advantage of storytelling through my 2D animation, and I don't really see much of that. I feel like I I'm able to uh, design and animate the characters, and you know, having that advantage to, uh, to for the, the storytelling is a it's very huge for me. So I try to you know use that as my like you know strong point, and and whenever there's like a a story that I want to tell, like I just do it through my animation, and I don't know. It's it's a uh, it's one of those things that you know, um, you know, all these ideas and the stories that I want to tell, it just happens naturally, and just just the fact that I'm able to animate like 20, 30 seconds animation, um, I feel like um, just becomes natural. I remember, so in September when we first met, it was in Seoul, in Korea, and you had an incredible show, which was a combination of physical pieces, it was video works, it was several like floors and rooms and experiences, and it sort of felt like a universe of its own. And could you maybe like share a little bit more about that project for people who didn't get to see it? Yes, so um, the animation you're looking at right now here, it's a piece for my solo show in Korea, and um, you know, I wanted to represent my hometown country, which is Korea, and yeah, like you know, it's basically me um, exploring the city. Even though I am from Korea, I didn't really grow up there. I grew up in the U.S., and every time I get to visit there, like it's like me discovering my home that I don't know much about, and so it's. It feels like home, but also like not so home. I don't know how to explain, but yeah, it's just me like exploring the city and you know, showing love to my home country. So how many people here live outside of their home countries? Can you raise your hand? Just all right. So I think, yeah, I think everyone can totally relate, uh, relate to that. And I think art makes a great connection to sort of build that relationship with culture. It really does. It really does. Um, actually, speaking sort of like about your upbringing, before the talk, you shared a very interesting story about um, leaving university after the second year and sort of like how you ended up being a creator. I'd love to, maybe if you want to share a bit more about that. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, I started my uh, art education when I was in 18, like everyone else, right? Um, I moved to New York and then went to a school called a School of Visual Arts. I'm not sure any of you guys know that, but um, um, after the second year, I had to leave, uh, take a leave of absence because my family was not able to support uh, my tuition. So, which is fine. Like you know, I took a break and I decided to find an intern um, all the places that I can, and 
at one place, uh, they decided to hire me as a full-time animator, which I was really happy for. And they said that they would pay me 50 bucks per day. I thought I was going to be rich at the time. I didn't know, you know. You know, just, be, just being able to do things on computer and get paid, I thought that was like a mind-blowing thing. But, you know, that's, it's crazy how far I, um, I came now. But, yeah, at the time, um, uh, you know, I became full-time and I realized that I, did, I don't really necessarily have to have like a diploma, a yeah, college degree in order to uh, live as an artist. So I just, I just decided to quit the school and, you know, start my uh, art career. Yeah, I, I, um, thanks for sharing that. I, I definitely, it's not like I'm trying here to encourage everyone to just go quit their school and like go, yay, <laughs> be a full-time artist, but I'm sure many of us didn't, don't have um, that full education and have become incredible artists. And you mentioned earlier about the piece in the corner that you sort of like fell asleep working and this also perfectly fits into one of the questions we had from the audience. It's by Mandy Pai Edits. What is your daily plan to avoid burnout? Uh, that's a very good question. Like, I think every artist uh, experiences burnout, and my advice is that try to have fun in what you do. So then, you know, when you do a lot of those fun things, you don't really find it um, stressful. Like, for me, I, I believe I make like really, really good art when I'm happy. So the first thing that I try to do is make myself. That, you know, in a good uh, condition, uh, mentally and physically, so that you know I can produce a good art. And whenever you know I run into stressful, stressful problems, I try to break, uh, take a break, and you know, don't try to force it. Just take a break. You know, go outside, touch grass, or whatever that makes you feel comfortable, and then come back and do it again. It's like you need to find that rhythm, like making sure you're not like stressing yourself. That's exactly what I do. <laughs> I, I actually, while you were saying that, I was looking at that piece, mm -hmm. and if you guys look at the bottom, it's like a very office environment. And the more the person goes up, it's sort of like keep going, and at the top, it's almost like it's an incentive to touch grass. So, yeah. I don't know if that was the point of the piece, but it's sort of like what you're saying, um, even though later on they break the ping pong table and they're fighting. What is going on there, by the way? So that's uh, yin yang. So the white guy is making thing, everything around him very positive, very you know happy. But the negative guy with the black shirt um, is making everything bad. So it's like a balance of good and bad, and you know just it just loops. Um, and you know that's just the, how life is. Like you see, when you want to see bad, you see bad. But when you want to see good, you see good. And it's your choice for you to choose which side you want to be on. Thanks for explaining that. I think we can all agree that your work brings a lot of positivity into our every, everyday life. And as you mentioned often yourself, it's sort of like bringing the inner child out to play because we all have that inner child. And as we have um, some of our final minutes, I would love to hear what would be your sort of like, I guess not definition of success, but what would be your ideal project, I don't want to say unrealized project, but what would be like your ideal project to work on if you had all the time in the world? You know, um, I always say that my art is for everyone, and I truly live by those words. Like, I want it all, you know, all the people here, you guys are here because you guys are in love with the art and, you know, in love with the technology. But I want my art to be appreciated by every single people on the planet. Meaning like even the little kids and the elders, um, anyone who do not know anything about art, I just want them, when they look at my art, I want them to feel something. And that's what I try to do. Like um, nothing too heavy, nothing too light. I mean, it could be light, but then when you look more into it, there's a story and it could be heavy. And by aesthetic, like it's really pretty to look at, but but then it's not just a lot of, all about the aesthetic. Like you look into it and you find that there's more story to it and there's um, deeper level um, in my art. So that's what I try to do: um, make art that everyone can love and relate. And yeah, let's give a big round of applause to DK. Thank you, thank you. Um, just want to say that uh, I appreciate everyone being here and um, and yeah.
I'm happy that I got to meet you all. Um, I hope I was not too boring, but yeah, thank you. You're great, you're great.